Hey, what is up guys? My name is Moonog and welcome back to The Last of Us Part 2. Only this time, instead of doing No Return, we're going to be doing The Lost Levels um, edition to The Last of Us Part 2. Uh, play early versions of levels that were cut during the original development of The Last of Us Part 2. These levels are presented in an unfinished pre-alpha state and have optional developer commentary. Now, I don't exactly know what all of this actually really includes i think it's just three uh separate lost levels that take place in different parts of the story and stuff like that i don't know if these levels include like actual gameplay audio or if the only audio is literally developer commentary so i guess we'll see when we get into it um play early versions of levels are cut yep 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 yep, yep. Ooh, jackson party Ellie nervously attends a party in Jackson. Ah, okay, so this takes place before the cutscene of Ellie and Dina dancing. Seattle sewers. Ellie is swept into Seattle sewer system. Hmm. Huh. So it just takes, like, that little part after you get attacked by all those stalkers um, and, like, expands on it. Because, like, you fall down into, like, the running water and then it takes you into, like, that tiny sewer area and then you're like immediately out of the sewer area and i think right after that is when you first get introduced to the seraphites the hunt ellie follows the trail of blood to an abandoned general store oh this is probably after the events of seattle then okay so i think obviously we'll start with jackson party silver is presented in an unfinished pre-alpha state reflecting its state when it was originally cut from the game the level does not have spoken dialogue only placeholder lines shown as subtitles Okay. Interesting. Developer commentary? I think so. Introduction video. Begin the level with an introduction video for Neil Jackman. Sure. Why not? It's gonna it's gonna be a definitely it's definitely gonna be a different and weird type of video, I'll admit. But I, I you know, me being a big fan of Last of Us, I'm curious to see what the cut content You're is. You're about to play an unfinished level from The Last of Us Part Two. Hey Neil Druckmann, my boy. Jackson. The Party. reason we added this section is there are a few sequences, and we picked the three of the best ones that we cut from the game. You know, often we build a game that's much bigger than what ends up being the final product. Mm. There are months away from mm -hmm. being finished, but we wanted to give you an insight of what it's like when we built the game, because often we have this whole thing constructed and it doesn't have final art or audio or dialogue. And here you get to see the building blocks of what it's like when we first string a bunch of these levels together. This huh. is the intro to the first deleted level. And this one is the roughest of the three. Mm. We wanted to show more of how Jackson operates. So this is the Ooh. festival where Ellie ultimately kisses Dina. The sequence would have come very late in the game as a flashback sequence while you're in the farm with Dina. And we wanted to show what is the rest of Jackson doing? Um, and wanted to put on the stick, make it interactive. So you could see when you're outside, there are all these almost like carnival games that you can play. You could Ooh. mix drinks. You could play with these kids that are playing a sort of clicker Marco Polo, sit down and listen to conversations. And all the different interactions were first or second pass, very, very early passes. The building blocks are there, but nothing is final. And ultimately, while we were very excited by the sequence, it's pretty fun and lighthearted. It just slowed things too much as we're barreling towards the end of the story at this point. So again, mm. reminder, rough, missing audio, missing animation, <laughs> missing gameplay tweaks, missing dialogue, but pretty representative of what it would have been. So enjoy. Hmm. Pretty cool. <clears throat> Ellie, long exhale, under breath, what the fuck is wrong with me? Okay. This is so weird. <laughs> There's no dialogue. Ah. Alright. Let's do this. So weird. What is this? Originally, oh. this level was going to transition us to farm. We would go all the way through to the dance, where Ellie and Dina share their first kiss. Then we would play through farm, and when Ellie plays the guitar at night, she would remember the Seth incident. So, the opening for this was a little tricky. Mm. We needed it to match at least a little what you might expect emotionally coming from prior beats. Because we were already purposefully disorienting you in time and space. 
Remember, you <laughs> just came from this huge fight. Yeah. To jump straight into it would have been a little too jarring. After some back and forth, we rooted it in Ellie's nerves, calling back to her hands shaking in the theater. But this time, for a much more innocuous reason we'll find out later. She's nervous because she has a crush on Dina, who is the only reason why she's here at the dance. Hmm. Huh. That's cool. I like this. Oh, this is a little snowman. It's so weird seeing like unfinished, like there's no details <laughs> on, on most of these buildings. But like some of the other buildings do have details, so that's kind of cool. Huh. Something we really wanted to do was highlight the way their lives had turned upside down since she went down this path. Mm -hmm. We had this idea of recontextualizing all of our usual gameplay mechanics that were designed for really violent ends. The workbench, door bashes, throwable weapons, and even the infected, which is my personal favorite. Peppered throughout the level are moments of levity or shared history, all the while seeing how happy and mundane they all were before her huge revenge odyssey. Mm. Whoa. Okay, yeah, you can definitely tell that all the details worked here first. But again, there's no like detail in this. It's crazy how far, or, like how much detail gets put into game developing, you know? We use our workbench a lot to make a lot of things that kill and maim and hurt people. Here, we had the silly idea of using the same feel, harkening back to the same animations, using the exact same UI to instead fix a drink. Like the yeah. workbench, you could pick your base and then you could add something to it. And at the time, we had some different reactions from Ellie based on how strong you chose to make the drink. <laughs> something we wanted to prototype though, before it got cut, was picking up some ingredients around to add like a lime or maybe a bottle of someone's favorite whiskey or salt mm. like you were earning upgrades we also toyed with having ellie carry around the drink you made and occasionally sip it psyching herself up to go talk to dina inside because she's nervous it got too noodly though because she would need to keep placing it somewhere before she did anything mm. so it would have ended up more trouble than it was worth this lady has a staring problem <laughs> so is that guy these like these character models don't have much detail to them. Hmm. Huh. What? A bourbon. <laughs> Her face. Okay. That was actually pretty good. Even if I do say so myself. The makeup artist is pretty simple. It's one of those little in-game scenes we peppered in to make it feel like Ellie had roots in the town. Hallie, our writer, mentioned that in her mind, an ex-girlfriend of Ellie's tattooed her arm to cover up her scar. Mm. So we figured this might be the only time you get to see that. Doing? We wanted to it's hint at it and allude to it and make it feel like there had been so much more that had been happening and so much more that Ellie threw away. Ah. Oh. She touched up, maybe I can add something else. Okay, so there was commentary there. Or there was talking there. Yeah, maybe. So that's the same lady that did the tattoo. Okay. Like, I don't know if I should, like, s like listen to the commentary. And once the commentary is done, then interact with, like, what it wants me to interact with. Or if I should enable the commentary, and then while the commentary is going on, I... Um, I do the activity like I just did there, but dialogue was being said between Ellie and the other character, and obviously with there not actually being dialogue from, like, Ashley Johnson and the other actors and stuff, I have to read out what they're saying, so, This yeah. is one of my favorite sections, because I think that it achieves both the slice-of-life aspect <laughs> of Jackson, while also being a stark reminder of how dark the world that they live in really, really is. Yeah. To attract attention and curiosity, one of the kids was supposed to make this adorable, messed up little clicker Dude, I'm gonna beat you. Giggle. We tried a version where if you got close enough, the kid might try to follow you a little before turning back. Mm. Since clickers are blind and move by echolocation, yeah. for this game of messed up tag, Ellie must close her eyes and listen for when the children give themselves away. The thought was that these kids are in relative safety. They still grow up with the dangers of clickers and runners, and all those lessons would embed themselves in the games that they play. 
Mm-hmm. When the festival got cut, they tried to preserve this moment and move it to the front of the game where the snowball fight is as a tutorial. Mm. However, being in the headspace of a clicker doesn't really teach you how to deal with them. That's Eventually, true. Eventually, it evolved and they instead made the snowball fight, which was, I think, way more effective. For me, it's character illuminating that not only does Ellie know this game, she plays along. There's a familiarity with the kids that's really nice to see, huh. especially because it's such a difference from the Ellie we see later, who has a sort of hollow normalcy that she's trying to get with JJ, but kind of fails. Hmm. That's cool. It's just kind of funny that they just like put the clicker animation that they have for the game and just like threw it onto like the kid model. And the kid model just looks like a tiny clicker walking around. Oh, you little fucking shit. I want to play with them. I just grab and just stick my switch blade in the kid's neck. Ah, gotcha. Hey, fuck you, Ellie. You're not even playing. Whoa. I am now. Oh, God. Whoa. Hold R1 to listen. You're making it too easy. I got you. Oh, God. Oh, that kid is just in the cooler now. He's gonna forever die. Huh. That's cool. Kind of like that. We got this one over here. It is not a festival without one of these throwing games. I guess that's this true. This one, of course, uses our throwable system where you're often chucking explosive things or stunning things, uh -huh. but for a more wholesome purpose, although some people take this game really seriously. A fun aspect of this is if you did well, you could win a oh. toy here. Ellie would place it in her pocket. If you had done this, you'd find the toy with JJ, the baby, later back at the farm. Oh. When they cut this, the toy made it through anyway because it was so cute. It is <sighs> the same one you see on the tractor at the farm. Ollie the elephant. Ah, cool. Hit like. Nice try, Ellie. Shut up. This game is rigged anyway. I want to play again. Cool. That's so cool. I can definitely see why this part was cut though. I, I can definitely see, like, I don't really get the point in uh, needing this to be in the game. So it makes a lot of sense. It definitely, like, yeah, because, like, this would have been, like, right after the fight between Abby and Ellie. So then, like, having it just throw you right back into Jackson. Um, and then having to do, like, all these little things. It would have been like, what? And it definitely would have dragged it on for a bit, because the Santa Barbara part kind of goes on for like an hour-ish. Oh, hey, Ellie, um... I'm gonna go get a drink. Yeah, I'll go, uh, mingle. Oh, were you guys doing something? My There's bad. A hidden spot at the back that was just a bit of fun. Oh. It was highlighting Jackson's normalcy with something we would find in a real world. In the back, you would find teenagers finding some alone time with each other in a dark corner of a party. Mm. It was rewarding the player for peeking into a hidden corner, but ultimately redirecting them back to the festival. We also had versions of them smoking weed here, despite Maria's consternation, probably having gotten it from Eugene. Hmm. Interesting. Cool. Well, that's the last commentary, so do I just go into the dance? I like this. I really like this. <laughs> Hey, Maria. Oh, there's like no facial animations for any of these. Hey, Tommy. Yeah, I'm sure there's supposed to be dialogue and facial animations and more detail inside there. That's so cool. I like that. I like this. Ellie is swept into the Seattle sewer system. This level was presented in an unfinished pre-alpha state, reflecting its state when it was originally cut from the game. Um, yeah, just do the same thing, just introduction video, all that stuff. Unless it's the same introduction video every time, then no. I don't think it is though. Lost levels, Seattle sewers. 
In this second deleted level, which is an extended sequence of the sewers in Seattle, this comes on the heels of where Ellie goes into a building and she um, survives an attack by stalkers and yep. gets thrown out of a window and gets swept away by the current. And then we cut the section that um, used to be there in the final game. Now you will get to play it. So this was a way to get a bit more interesting puzzles, um, interesting traversal, uh, figure out how Ellie can navigate the sewers with the fighting current. Ultimately, with a lot of these levels and these sequences, the reason why we cut them were for pacing purposes. Uh, but here it is for you in this very kind of raw form that part of it will feel finished, parts of it will feel like assets are missing as far as audio animation won't be final. But it's a glimpse into what a game looks like when it's months away from finishing. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Cool. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm playing. <laughs> so it's gonna throw you, it's gonna throw me into a completely different sewer section now. Instead of throwing you into that, like, that tiny area that you get thrown into, ugh. it's gonna throw you into a completely different area. That's weird. Ow. Oh, there's a thing there. Oh, there was a like a rag that you could pick up there. So weird. And hey, we got audio <laughs> the hell am I? yeah so in the um in the final cut of the game like you get thrown into a sewer system but it's not this extended i mean neil just explained it and that's what this is it's an extended version of the sewers but like it's just crazy how that was kind of i'm pretty sure again i've only played through the this game twice um but it's basically like the same cutscene before it. You get put through the sewer system, but then you get put into a completely different area. That's just weird, but I, it's so cool. This level, internally known as Fine Nora, is quite long in duration as we had to make Ellie traverse a far distance to the opposite side of downtown Seattle. Mm. The sewer section was originally longer than what we released the game with, approximately 10 minutes more. 10 minutes? This was one of the few areas of the game that used water flow as part of a traversal puzzle player has to go upstream to use the current to get to the platform to reach the other side. We mostly cut this mechanic game wide, however it remained in essence in the section swimming to the aquarium as Ellie when you were avoiding the waves. Mm. That's right. So I want to go up, have the current take me down, and then climb. Okay, easy. Easy peasy. But I need to get to that commentary. Or do I need to do this? When players reach the doorway and enter into the room, they're faced with a dead end. The real reason for this dead end room is that on the reversal when exiting back out of the doorway, players are faced with the route onwards. A pipe that they've not been able to see when they were swept past it on the way in. I saw something that was hidden from view when on the side platforms. The intention here being that the only option is to go off the standard path in order to search for a way out. I don't know. Okay, I kind of want to try and get this though. Yeah, Ellie Belly, let's get it. The ladder acts as an immediate goal for the player. But yep. Being able to climb out is not going to be so easy. To keep levels interesting and engaging, we alternate between positive and negative values the player experiences. Okay. Here, it's a positive to have found the ladder, but then a negative to discover it's not the solution but then another positive to identify the next short-term goal of the doorway. By alternating between these opposing values, we give players what they expect, but not how they expect it. Mm. So like, it's like, oh, I see the ladder. But then as you see the ladder and you see it's not a way to go out, you see the doorway right there. But then when you see the doorway, you see the pipe, because the doorway is probably also not a way out. Cool. Uh, fucking kidding me. 
Ah, yep, 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 yep. Ladder's broken. This is so cool. Was I supposed to climb up this? I think I was. I think I was supposed to climb on this and then get to there. And then do that commentary. And then do that commentary. Okay. My bad. Yeah, I know I need to go there, but I want to see what's up with the door. Supplies. It's so cool that it's like treating it like it's just like, yep, okay, you're playing the game now. Can I like craft anything? Probably not. Oops. Give me. Give me the hell out of here. Throughout the rest of the level, we also use light to indicate to the player that they were heading in the right direction. Mm -hmm. At each turn, however, we block the direct route forward. Players would know that they just have to keep finding alternative paths, promoting those feelings of being desperate and trapped. Okay. We slowly introduce the player to consider climbing into smaller pipes and crouching in these tight spaces. Mm. This is to slowly build up to, and encourage, the player to climb into such a small pipe that they'd have to be crawling on their stomach, which is something that the player previously may not have recognised as a playable space, let alone the desired route they need to take. Yeah, it's... Shit. I'll turn on... Just keep going up and out. Oh, like this? Well, I should probably do the commentary, because that's probably what it wants me to do. We added a tiny space just to reward the player's exploration with a pickup item, and we made sure it was something that made sense to find in this area. A canister and all the garbage that had been washed into the sewers from the surface. Yeah, the last of us is kind of known for that, like, hidden little areas that... You would be like, can I go in there? And then you go in there and then there's a bunch of loot and goodies and it's like, yeah, that was worth it. We love the idea of making Ellie prone through a tiny, dirty pipe in order oh. to get out. Oh, as it was a great opportunity to use our pro mechanic. The unique camera setup was oh, great to support crawling in these pipes, as the standard prone camera is much higher above the player. We also created custom collision in order for Ellie to maneuver in these tight spaces easily. Initially, the oblong collision capsule around the character caused issues crawling around corners. Mm. We put extra effort into the custom corner collision so the movement experience is as smooth as the main game. Huh. In order for the player to feel cramped, claustrophobic and desperate, we'd been enforcing the traversal mechanics that allow for a tight environment which promote these feelings. We introduced the use of the squeeze through so that we can keep the player feeling enclosed and tight, but without repeating the same geometry. Here we change from low ceilings with wider walls to high mm -hmm. ceilings and tight walls to change up the spatial pacing and keep the level from repeating itself. Okay. Uh, fuck you, universe. <laughs> yeah, it would. I wonder if it's gonna throw me into like a combat scenario or anything like that. Originally, we had the waterline much higher here, so players had to swim through this tight tunnel. However, from watching user test feedback, it was occasionally causing people to discount the route entirely and turn back on themselves. So to avoid any risk of this happening in the final game, we present a lower water level so the tunnel is easy to see and commit to using. Mm. Although this isn't as impactful without the prone swim, it's the better decision as it means a smooth experience for the player with no backtracking frustration. Huh. We draw the player towards this pipe, as it is seemingly the route out of the tight space. Fairly soon, it is obvious that this path is blocked. If the player goes all the way up to the bars that block the path, they are rewarded with a pickup, so this journey doesn't feel wasted. <laughs> it is important to encourage the player to try to progress along this path, so that they would subtly be thinking of progress in this direction. We hint to the player that there is a bigger, new space beyond this pipe, by showing the player the waterfall. Yeah. This helps players consider the other route but they don't know how far the tunnel is or whether they'd make it. As we surface from the water and over the crest of the slope, we reveal what is further in this tunnel. A clicker that has sprouted and the fungus has grown on the sides of the pipe. Oh no. It was great to see people who user tested this area becoming increasingly worried as we forced the player to squeeze past the fungus and inches away from the clicker's face, all the time not being sure whether the clicker might be alive or attack them. 
Although we aren't as cruel as to force a clicker attack in such close proximity, we do have a payoff for this moment. Aww. This clicker momentarily turned into Joel to show Ellie's PTSD from what happened to Joel at the start of the game. What? Ultimately, we decided to save this moment for the farm level, as it was more impactful there because it could become the centerpiece of that experience. Whereas in the sewers, we weren't able to make it as much of a narrative point and give it the breathing room and reaction time that it deserves, given the tight space. Interesting. Oh, this is gross. And that's kind of screwed up. Uh. Whoa. Oh, whoa. I like that. That's such a small thing. You could have kept this part. Because I think that's like the thing that they didn't do a good job with. Um, kind of is with Ellie's PTSD um, of losing Joel. I, I feel like they could have done more because you didn't really like you knew like you knew she wanted to go on her revenge quest and stuff like that. But like, um, but like showing how it was really messing with her, you only saw it in her journal and in, in like what she was writing down. And you didn't really actually like see her having PTSD and anything like that until the very end of the game with the farm. <laughs> and her just constantly like thinking like maybe I should have killed Abby because maybe I would have had closure. So her constantly having Abby on her mind and then Tommy coming and not helping with that situation. Like I feel like they could have done a better job at really showing Ellie's PTSD at like super subtle moments like that with the clicker in the sewer. But that's just me. I feel like that just would have made more sense. Oh. For the final section, we eventually opened you out into a wider area as you traverse through such tight spaces leading up to this. So changing the environmental pacing makes it begin to feel like we're coming to the end of Ellie's ordeal. An earlier iteration used the current that would shown at the start for a slightly tougher traversal puzzle to conclude the sewers. The ladder was clearly visible from most of the area, but the player was faced with a fast flowing torrent of water they couldn't cross. Mm. If the player attempted to jump into the water, they were not able to swim across the ladder due to the water's speed, but instead they had to traverse the pipe running along the top of the space in order to get across the water. Ah. Oh yeah, now this is the area that we all, well, a version. The layout of this is very similar, but also very different than what we have in the final product. But this area is kind of like the same, basically. Oh, but what's this? No, 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 no. There's another pipe down here, Ellie. I want to know what's down this pipe. Oh, nothing. Anything? You could definitely hear something. I saw a video of people. I saw a video of people, um. Saying that you could hear like the rat cane in the sewer system because this is pretty close to the hospital area. Oh, you, 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 you. Using this pipe was retained in the iteration we shipped with, as it's the last of the extreme methods Ellie has to undergo in order to escape the sewers and what she will go through in her pursuit of revenge. Huh. Yeah, like there's like subtle audio hints that like Ellie that you can hear the rat king in the sewer system so like it kind of lets you know you know the last ladder climb is quite lengthy and although we could have trimmed it down to a shorter climb we liked how this last segment of the journey built anticipation for whether there was success at the top or not after all you've been through ultimately the ladder exits out into the subway station which is how it connects in the final game Ellie then has to find her way to the hospital from here, crossing paths with the scars for the first time. Is there not another audio commentary, or is there one at the top of the ladder? Because I'm still missing one. I really hope that's not it, or I'm going to be mad if I miss the audio thing. 
Please no. Please have there be one more. One more. No, I missed one? Where? Where did I miss one? Ah, it's fine. It's just one. Alright, the hunt. Ellie follows a trail of blood to an abandoned general store. This level is presented in an unfinished pre-alpha state, reflecting the state when it was originally come from the game. Alright. That was cool. Um, I, I would have kept the um, crawling through the sewer with the clicker. I would have kept that section. Rest cut. To eat, rest cut. Because even... Third I don't know. and final deleted level... Um, what we call the boar hunt sequence. This was a sequence pretty late in the game. It was right after the whole Seattle Abby sequence where uh, Abby spares Ellie. And then we wanted to come back into Ellie's story, but keep it a bit mysterious of how much time has passed, where is Ellie now? So we're coming in on Ellie uh, and she's following a trail of blood. And we wanted to mirror in a way the deer hunt sequence from the first game, but this time do it with a boar. And there's something with Ellie that now she's, she can't let go of this violence. She's pursuing it um, even against this innocent animal. This was another opportunity to show how the violence that Ellie has experienced, the violence that she witnessed being uh, afflicted on oh, Joel, Jesus. is still sticking with her. And she's still uh, experiencing these PTSD moments. This was a sequence that was pretty far along and was cut pretty late in production. Parts of it are still really rough, but the gameplay, the building blocks were all there. I think you'll have fun to see, like, a, again, a rough, unfinished sequence um, of, that you can play. You can see all the way to the end and including a cinematic that we end up cutting. And the remnants of the sequence ended up being mentioned in Ellie's mm -hmm. journal. So this part of the, the story that we developed still made its way into the game as kind of optional stuff that you could read about, but here you get to experience it. So as a reminder, this is pretty rough, <laughs> months away from being finished, uh, but you get to see it now. It's crazy that it's just like a couple months away from being finished. Like it was super close to being a final product, but like they didn't, they ended up just completely oh, yeah. cutting it. That's so weird. Yeah, no, like, I don't know, I just feel like throughout the game, they could have, again, with the PTSD, like, they, like, throughout the game, like, not, like, throw it at you as, like, jump scares or, like, every single freaking like, little, like, dead, infected or person, like, Ellie sees, like, Joel and stuff like that, but, like, just little things like that in the sewer, and it's just, like, random, it's, it's like, oh, yeah, like, this is really affecting her, but, like, instead of, but, like, instead they threw it in as journal entries, which is a completely optional thing that you can easily forget about because i did when i first played through this game i forgot that ellie would put stuff down in her journal um as the story progressed because <laughs> the game doesn't really tell you to read the journal it's just kind of an optional thing so it wasn't until my last of us part two two years later playthroughs when i actually read every single journal entry and it made me love the story even more than i already did so having it be an optional thing to see how it affected ellie through journal entries is a little frustrating, but it's fine. They could have just thrown in little things like that with the clicker in the sewer. They could have thrown in little moments like that, and that would have been fine. But it's it's fine. It's fine. So the boar hunt was one of the hardest levels for me to work on. It was Ooh. a huge challenge with the systems that we had, and we kept trying, but it never felt quite right. Originally, the level happened after the Jackson Festival, which also got cut, but before... <laughs> Once the festival got cut, it became the prologue to farm. The intended experience is that we jump forward in time after the fight with Abby in the theater. We don't know where Dina is. We likely assume she's dead because she was just bleeding out. Yeah. Ellie's alone. Her hair is short. So maybe this is the future or the present. And she's hunting. Hunting who? Abby still? Mmm. That's kind of like a cool way to put it. It's like, yeah, this would have been right after right after it huh. in early iterations of the fight it was more arena like the player slowly whittles down the boar's health ellie gets more visceral and more vicious we get a little worried about her as the boar gets weaker more panicked more feral and we start feeling sympathetic to the boar was the hope 
uh, in all of these iterations, especially of these wider areas, Definitely it required not. custom AI and scripting to make sure it continued to feel organic as an animal, but we really needed it to do specific stuff. It needed to be able to close distances really, really quickly. It needed to charge to attack, but we wanted the feeling of hunting, so we needed to track it down from afar. Mm. And we also needed to discourage the player from attacking the boar when it's that close, or it would kind of turn into this melee kerfuffle. How do we do this in our world while keeping the boar believable? It's it's just so cool, like hearing people talk about how they're developing the these sections and like what their what their thought process is of like how to like make it flow and have it make sense for the gameplay and for the players so that they're not bored, so that they don't feel so overwhelmed and uncomfortable. Like it's so cool. We must have gone through five or talk. six iterations of the bar fight and all, and every single time it changed pretty drastically. Hmm. We split it into clear phases where one gotcha. was like all long range. We tried another where you're getting close and you get the jump on it quite literally. You're jumping off of a rock <laughs> to attack it. Uh, and then finally, we tried a bunch where you almost so sort of uh, go around a bunch of trailers and try and try and wrestle it. We uncovered after some time that taking down a boar over several phases felt very laborious and a little dramatic. It was comically long, it felt too boss-like, uh, a little too <laughs> gamey. We decided mm. to cut the first few phases, and we opted for a cold open after the boar had already been hurt off screen. So that allowed us to focus on feeling like we're closing in on prey and to introduce the boar when it was at its most dangerous. Already hurt, already feral, much too close for comfort. And so the thinking was it would bring us more into Ellie's mindset. Is this really hunting for food or is she hunting for some other reason? Hmm. I don't like that she said we don't we didn't want it to feel too gamey even though it's a video game. I think that's something that a lot of people love and hate about Naughty Dog is that they feel like is that some people feel like Naughty Dog needs to stop making such ridiculous cinematic experiences and just mainly focus on games. But in my opinion, I like video games that are more cinematic and movie-like because it just makes it more fun. It just makes it more entertaining. You know? I don't know. Like, as long as the gameplay is good when you do get to play the game, like, I don't really see the big deal. It's, it, like, in my opinion, super massive with, like, Until Dawn and, like, the Dark Anthology and, like, the Quarry. Even though those games have, well, Dark Anthology stories are not good in the game and the gameplay across all the games is just so boring and basic but the stories for until dawn and the quarry are so good um that it just makes the experience fun and worth playing through um and those games are like in my opinion more you more cinematic because it's literally just press this button to do a quick time event move the analog stick to shoot a gun in this game, I'm, I I can I can dodge, I can open an inventory and heal myself, and just like I can have different play styles. I can be sneaky or I can be guns blazing. You know, I don't know. Like Naughty Dog definitely has super cinematic experiences, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But they but for the developer to say we don't want it to feel too gamey is like okay, come on. The gas station was built to highlight the boar's destructiveness. Since it's cramped, the boar feels larger. We also feel trapped with it, though perhaps it's trapped with us. When it charges, it gets to us quickly, so it must be on our toes. This made it more aligned with our sort of hunting for trouble mindset. Listening became more important, as well as moving around slowly so it didn't hear you. Could you spot it before it saw or heard you? And could you get a shot off quickly enough so you could dodge out of the way? Or is the shot worth the cost after? It feels like a gamble. By the end of the fight, everything would be in shambles. The ball would burst through the back, and Ellie would follow it and finally enact revenge. Interesting. So now it's a boss fight with a boar. I guess this definitely feels a little too gamey for what they're trying to for this for what they're trying to tell so i guess i get uh, never mind i take back what i said about her saying it's too gamey for what they're trying to tell it definitely makes sense that um it feels a little too gamey because right now i'm treating this more like a boss fight so it's kind of taking me a little out of the moment so never mind i take back sorry developer i'm an idiot i don't know anything about what's the boar doing 
so weird. Yeah, it definitely feels like a, a gamey moment. Ran in there. Is this the last commentary? The kill yep. was supposed to be anything but glorious. With the boar whimpering at the back of the gas station after Ellie's relentless hunt. After this, hearing the drone that we kind of come to associate with Ellie's trauma, we would hard cut to the stream where she's washing her hands and holding rabbits that she hunted, about to return to Dina. Mm. And there would be no mention of the boar. You're done. Huh. It's a full on cutscene, like a somewhat finished cutscene. Oh, whoa. Wow. That's kind of cool. So instead of doing the hunt, instead of doing the boar scene, they just did the barn scene on the farm. So both work there. Wow. I like that. I really, really, really like that. That was cool. And I, and I guess, like what Neil said, uh, there's a lot of cut content, but they felt that these three pieces of cut content were the most important to have the player experience and see what I guess could have been. Um, so obviously there's a lot more cut content. I kind of want to see it. <laughs> like, I kind of want to see, like, Cause yeah, like Neil said, it's like they they create such a big project and like it's such a big game, and then as they're progressing through the development, they're like, oh, that's got to get cut because that ruins the pacing of the game. That's got to get cut because that just doesn't really fit in with what we're trying to do. That's got to get cut because that's just not needed. Um, hmm. But that was Lost Levels of The Last of Us Part Two. This was cool. This was. This was a nice, fun look into how developers develop the game, why they cut it, how it fits in, how it doesn't fit in with the flow of the game, and why it wasn't there in the final product. And it's fun hearing developers talk about how they tried to make this work, but it just ended up not working out. But um, this was cool. Again, all like this in a new mode, two new modes technically, with guitar free play. Play the guitar with no goal or time limit. Try alternate instruments, characters, and guitar effects. Earn points and unlock... Earn points? <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. How do you earn points in guitar play? <laughs> um, and unlock unique content by finding collectibles, earning trophies, progressing in no return, and completing the story on higher difficulties. Oh, so you unlock stuff if you play through no return in the story. That's cool! I'm not gonna do guitar free play. Um, it, it was a cool little. It's a cool little section that you can do in the story, but um, the game tells you what notes and strings to play, like how, like what you need to do to actually play the damn guitar. Where this, like, if you know how to play the guitar, you could probably have a ton of fun with this because I know people, you know, can go crazy with it. Um, so that's cool. Guitar free play. But yeah. Uh, that was uh, Lost Levels. That was really cool. Me being a big Last of Us fan, it's cool seeing behind-the-scenes stuff and like seeing cut content. Um, but yeah, again, this game is my all-time favorite. It's it's such a great story. It's such a cool world. I love the characters. I love The Last of Us. This this game means a lot to me. Obviously, like I I never shut the hell up about it. I got Ellie's tattoo. You know, like this game is amazing. It gets a lot of hate, but it's great. And I, I'm excited for what Naughty Dog has in store for us. They've been so quiet. They've been so quiet with what their next story project is. And I, I, I can't wait to see what it is. Whether it's Last of Us Part 3 or a new IP, I cannot wait. I absolutely cannot wait. Because um, you can tell that Naughty Dog puts a lot of work into their games. And them taking longer to reveal what's coming next just like it makes sense like it like like with the last of us part two it was announced back in 2016 but it didn't come out until 2020 
and but in between those four years like we got little to no updates for the game until 2020 but like at that time covid was a thing so we the game constantly kept getting delayed and everything like that because of covid and yeah i'd rather have naughty dog take their sweet time and announce the game when it's way closer to being ready and to be released and stuff like that than announcing a game and then we have to wait like six fucking years for it to actually release i i, I would rather developers do that than announce it and then years later it finally comes out because it just makes more sense to do that but that was um, the Lost Levels. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Also, make sure you hit that little bell so you guys get notifications when I upload to the channel. If you guys want to check out some more Last of Us content, I have a lot. I'll have some annotations pop up before the video ends. It'll take you to some Last of Us playlist so you guys can see more content from me on this game and The Last of Us Part 1 and The Last of Us and The Last of Us Remastered and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy. See you guys in the next one. Goodbye, everybody.